This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skid. What's going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, you may remember I had just covered Evil Portal a couple weeks ago. That was a brand new project. At the time of filming, it had only been out for like two days. Now, at that time, it was just a teeny tiny little baby project, but guess what? It's really grown up since then. And then on top of that, Coco Code came out with honestly one of the most groundbreaking things that I've seen in Flipper for a long time. I don't even think they fully grasp how amazing this app is. Now, that app is the ESP Flasher. That will allow you to flash Wi-Fi boards made by almost any of the creators right with your flipper. You can flip back and forth between Evil Portal, Marauder. It's so easy and you can do it all on your flipper. It's absolutely amazing. I was even able to throw my hat in and help out a little bit. I figured out a way of streamlining the process even more. So instead of having four files to select, I got it down to one. So it's even faster, it's even easier. It's so freaking cool. How quick and easy is it? Well, in the time I've been talking to you so far, it's actually been installing in the background and it is done. Look at that. Boom, finished programming. It's already done. It's so freaking cool. So that's enough hype for right now. Let's get right into it. All right, so first things first, we'll do a quick review on how to install Evil Portal. Let's hop over to the desktop. I know Evil Portal's installed on Rogue Master by default. I'm not honestly sure about Extreme or Unleashed. However, you can install it right here pretty easily. Here's Evil Portal. And then, you know, make sure you have your uh, flipper plugged into your USB-C and then go to flipc.org, navigate to Evil Portal, select your firmware right here. Right now, I'm actually running official on this flipper on release because this is the flipper I use to show how to use the App Store. And then just click install and that'll go ahead and do all that for you no problem and from here we can also install the esp flasher tool if we just go back it should be in gpio and then if we just look around it's going to take me forever i'll probably fast forward through there we go esp flasher cool click install and boom that's done as well there is one additional step we have to do so we can actually open up q flipper and then we need to add to the SD card under apps data. We need to add a folder for evil portal. This is where it's going to find the index.html file and the actual program file for evil portal it's going to use. Now this can be downloaded directly from evil portal. All you have to do is go to the main file here. Click, click the right buttons here. Download zip. I'll drop this onto my desktop. Save. Same thing we did last time. Open that. Extract all, close the original, evil portal main, uh, flipper, apps data. Here's our evil portal folder right there. And we're going to drop this just directly into apps data. Done. And then we are going to, again, add a new folder called logs. Now, we don't necessarily need it because I learned a cool little trick that I had no idea about when I filmed the first video, how to actually view the passwords and credentials live on the screen. But having a logs folder is not a bad idea either. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and prepare our, whoops, I skipped out too far, apps data. We're going to go into the ESP Flasher. This is going to be some cool stuff. Now, in the ESP Flasher folder, I have already included these files. These are the single files that I created with the help from Coco Code, of course. And these files are actually single files, and they will allow you to install Evil Portal on the Wi-Fi dev board, the ESP32 room, or the Marauder S3. I don't have files for the Evil Portal on the S3 yet, but those will be coming in the future. And also, fun fact, the ESP Flasher is actually available on the official mobile store so if you have uh, if you're running official firmware you can download it from there it's really easy these files are available on my github and I'm gonna be uh, doing a pull request to submit these to big bro dude as soon as we're done with this video in fact actually let's go ahead and create pull requests right now boom so hopefully by the time this video comes out those will be attached to uh, the big bro dude 6119's github so now that we have all that done, we can actually go ahead and open up our ESP flasher. So let's go back to here, open up our actual flipper. Now, all we have to do is go to applications. We're going to go to GPIO. And then down here, we're going to have our brand new ESP flasher. Super cool. We're going to go to flash ESP. There we go. 
and we're just going to select bootloader right here. All we have to do is select the bootloader. So we're going to flash uh, evil portal for the Wi-Fi board or a um, ESP32 S2 rover. Uh, if you have a board that's an ESP32 S2, it'll work or this works with the Wi-Fi board. Click yes. And then before we go down to the bottom here to select flash, we have to set the board into DFU mode. Let me show you how to do that real quick. So we got a cool new trick. Since we're not plugging it into the computer, but we still need to go into boot mode, all we have to do is hold both buttons down. Editing Sasquatch here, I screwed this up before. You're gonna hold the right button, then press the left button. So I'll show you, hold the right button, press the left button, let go of the left button, let go of the right button, that easy. And if you have any of the other boards, like, let me grab one. Here's a board that I made. You can see it's still got the boot button. So if I can get up here real close, we'll focus. So we're gonna hold the boot button on there and then press and release the top button. That will drop into DFU mode. Now I've got another board from AWA. This is the uh, the board he made for me, super cool. And um, actually if you just take the case off, then you'll actually find the boot and uh, flash buttons on there. So just do the same process with those. But if you ever wondered how people like myself and AWA make their custom boards, well that brings us to our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offers custom PCB printing with so many cool options. You can select from a variety of materials. You can have a ton of different color masks. You can even get silk screening. So really, it allows you to be as creative as you want to be. Don't want to have to solder all those boards yourself? Well, guess what? You don't have to. PCBWay offers an assembly service and they'll put it all together for you. PCBWay can also supply the parts for you with their turnkey service, or you can actually supply the parts yourself. So if you've got a cool PCB project, check out the link down in the description for a free instant quote. Well, thanks so much PCBWay for the support and let's get back at it. All right, so now that we have the dev board into DFU mode, all we gotta do is go back into QFlipper and click flash and it's gonna do its thing. So let's check it out. All right, so yeah, we're back in the desktop. All we gotta do is click flash and it's gonna go and start erasing the flash. That's one of the steps that we had to do last time. This does it all automatically. So it's really one step and go. So we'll just sit here and wait for this to finish, but it takes no time and it's literally that easy. And that's it, we're done. It's literally that easy, it's so cool. So in the beginning, you used to have to select all of the different files here. And if you accidentally forgot to put the board into DFU mode, you'd have to select all of those all over again. But with yeah, the single files that I made, all you gotta do is select the one file and then you're ready to go. It couldn't be easier. Now, if anybody's curious how exactly I did that, well, if I grab this folder here, I made a little script. Now, I'm definitely not a coder, but I do dabble a little bit. So let's pop in a notepad. We can take a look at what that looks like. So what it does is it uses ESP tool to basically merge all of the bins into one single file. It has the chip already selected on it and it's modified per each different iteration that I made. And yeah, it'll take all those four files, put it into one file. And all you have to do is enter that into the bootloader and bam, you are done. It's that easy. All right, so let's go back into our Q flipper. So let's uh, go back here. I'm going to click the reset button on my dev board so that it actually resets and it gets out of the flashing mode. I always go the wrong direction because I forget in this it's not uh, alphabetized. We'll open up Evil Portal and click Start. And with any luck, it's going to go. Yeah, it's working. Editing Sasquatch here one more time. I forgot to actually show you how the login credentials show up on the Flipper screen. So as soon as somebody actually falls for it and enters their credentials in, it actually shows up on the bottom. So you can just scroll down and you can see exactly what people have entered. So now for the update to Evil Portal, they have added a ton of login pages and they are really freaking cool. So let's take a look at some of those. We'll just open up our folder over here, which has all of our evil portal files. And these are the portals. They've made all of these portals. They're super cool. So like American Airlines, Cox Wi-Fi, we've got Facebook, we've got a better looking Google login. I mean, there's just so many of them. Starlink, you can log into your Starlink. So they've done a lot of really cool work with that. And one of the things that you do is when you go into the um, the flipper, remember those apps data files? Well, the apconfig.txt 
that contains the name of the Wi-Fi hotspot. So you can just change it from here and then save it and then drop it back into here. And then that will change the name of the portal. Then you can take any of those evil portals that we had loaded up before and replace them and just rename them to index HTML in this folder and it will show that login page. That makes this type of attack so much more useful because you can cater it to your environment. So great job. Absolutely fantastic work, everybody. Coco Code, you have made one of the greatest applications for Flipper to date. Now, let me let you in on a little bit of underground information and don't hold anybody to this, but I was told by Just Call Me Coco that he might be trying to add Evil Portal to Marauder. Now, I know that Just Call Me Coco and Big Bro Dudes have been working behind the scenes trying to figure out how to get all the protocols to work together. Coco said he intends to have this working for Marauder version 10.9, so I can't wait to see that one. Hats off to all of the creators for everything for Flipper. I mean, you guys make all of this so much more fun. If we only had the official devs working on projects, I mean, we'd never be where we're at now. I also want to thank each and every one of you guys, because without you, none of us would be here either. So please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notification. It helps me out tremendously. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you next time.